What is up everybody? Welcome back to another Far Cry video. Now for today's video, I figured I would do a little bit of a tips and tricks video for you guys. Now as of recording this video, I have 41 to almost 42 hours of gameplay put into Far Cry 6 so far. And I've learned a lot of things from trial and error. There's a lot of things that this game just doesn't straight up tell you. And you kind of just have to figure out on your own. So that is why I'm making this video. So when you guys get your hands on this game, you don't make the same mistakes early on that I did. And trust me, it's going to save you a ton of time and a ton of headaches if you guys just listen to these tips and tricks so if you guys end up enjoying this video please remember to give it a thumbs up that will help me out greatly in the algorithm and stuff and with that said let's just jump right into it so the first tip I'm going to give you guys is that if you're ever just lost out in the environment for whatever reason and you don't have a vehicle you can always call one of your personal vehicles to you you can do this either one of two ways you can either pause it and you can go over to the rides tab and then you can select one of four personal vehicles that you can have and you can customize and then you can call it to you from that menu or you can just hold in the weapon wheel and it's going to be the very bottom thing that you can select on your weapon wheel so be sure to do this anytime you're just lost or can't find a vehicle maybe you don't want to get into any conflict odds are most of the time if you come across a civilian vehicle it's slow and crappy anyway and sometimes you just don't want to get involved in a gunfight so sometimes it's just not too smart to steal a vehicle from the enemy so this is always just a good idea to call in your own personal vehicle so the next tip i'm going to give you guys is that loot works a little bit different in this game there's multiple ways that you can get different outfits and you can get different weapons. You can either go to different vendors and spend currency on some of the weapons and the gear, or you can actually find pretty much every weapon and random chests throughout the environment. So if you don't want to spend in-game currency and you just like to do a lot of exploring, you can actually save a lot of money and resources by just going around exploring and opening a lot of chests. I got the majority of the weapons that I unlocked in this game just from opening up random chests throughout the environment. Like I found two or three guns that I liked and I stuck with them and then I just ran around and collected a ton of chests and that's how I got a lot of my weapons. If I would have went to the vendors and spent just nothing but money on the weapons, I'd be completely broke in this game because all the weapons seem to cost a lot of money for whatever reason. So I saved a little bit of my money for some of the bigger weapons later on in the game. I'm kind of glad that I did that because if I would have just spent my money on any gun that I didn't have unlocked, I'd been broke by the end and I wouldn't have had any money. So definitely go exploring, save your money, don't worry too much about unlocking all the weapons as you play the game and you collect more and more chests, you will get just better gear just by collecting all these chests. So the next tip I have is don't go swimming unless you absolutely have to. And even then, I still don't recommend it. I made the mistake early on thinking I could swim from one island to the next or I didn't need a boat or anything. I could just swim for it. And this is a bad idea. There are a lot of things in the water that you cannot defend yourself against, such as sharks, eels, crocodiles. I mean, you name it. There's something in the ocean or in ponds whatever body of water there's something in there that's probably going to do damage to you or just straight up kill you uh, there's jellyfish you can get stung by jellyfish that doesn't feel too good definitely just don't go swimming it doesn't matter how late or how early you are into the game i've been playing for 40 some hours and i still try to avoid swimming at all costs because you just can't defend yourself from like five sharks attacking you at the same time just don't go swimming always take a boat so the next tip i have is for fast traveling now there's a decent amount of fast travel points throughout the map once you explore the map and you take different checkpoints and you take different bases for yourself anything that you capture from the enemy becomes a fast travel point for you and even though there's a lot of fast travel points sometimes they just don't get you close enough to your destination so one thing I found really handy was once you unlock the wingsuit which you can do pretty early on you actually have the option to drop in from the sky on these fast travel points which is really really handy you could just drop in from the sky and then while you're in the sky you can just glide your way to to whatever your destination is. I find myself doing this just all the time. It saved me a lot of time to just spawn to the nearest location and then glide to my objective. So once you guys unlock the wingsuit, like I said, you can get that pretty early on. I recommend doing this and it will just save you a ton of time traveling around the environment. So my next tip involves helicopters. When I'm not fast traveling, I found that the helicopter is just the best way to get around. I personally like this really tiny helicopter. It's just small and it's pretty easy to 
maneuver, but it can be a little bit tricky to fly around with helicopters in areas that you've not explored yet because there's a lot of anti-aircraft guns. So until you take out all of the anti-aircraft guns, it's going to be pretty much impossible for you to fly airplanes or helicopters. But I found that a way to get around this is if you fly really low to the ground. So if you're in a no-fly zone, just fly close to mountains or trees or the ground. And if you fly low enough, the anti-aircraft guns can't get you. So what I would normally do is if I was in a no-fly zone, I would just mark the anti-aircraft gun on my map and then I would just fly straight to it, hugging the ground as close as possible. I would show up to the gun, take it out, and then I can fly freely wherever I want. And this map is absolutely huge. In my opinion, I think it's way bigger than Grand Theft Auto 5's map. I mean, this map is absolutely massive. So once you start unlocking different helicopters and airplanes, definitely going to want to fly around the environment with a helicopter because it's just the fastest way to get around to do things. Now the next tip I have for you guys has to do with looting. In Far Cry 6 you have to do a lot of looting to gather different resources to upgrade your weapons and to upgrade your home base. You basically just have to run around and collect a ton of resources throughout your entire playthrough. You can sell these different resources if you want in exchange for money which you can then use to buy different outfits or different weapons. But there's actually an option in your HUD it says pick up outline. Now this is extremely handy. It may look a little weird having white outline lines on different objects but trust me if you don't have this turned on it's going to be a lot harder for you to notice a lot of the different things that you can pick up in the environment if you turn on these outlines in your HUD it makes things just way way easier you can spot them from a little bit further away and this helped me out a ton when I had to farm different types of resources so I just highly highly recommend you go to your HUD and you turn on the pickup outline and trust me you will thank me later so the next tip I have I actually didn't find out until way later in my playthrough which was pretty annoying but in this game Game, you could unlock different vehicles boats horses you name it there's just a ton of different vehicles you can have but to unlock a vehicle for yourself you have to steal the vehicle and then drive it back to your base that's one way that you can claim a vehicle but I found out another way that you can claim vehicles is if you pull out your phone you can actually scan any vehicles that you don't currently already own and then they will automatically be unlocked for you that way you don't have to drive every single vehicle back to your base now this doesn't work for every vehicle it won't work for military vehicles for example if you see a tank or a military helicopter you can't just scan it you're actually going to have to drive the tanks back to your base or drive the helicopters back to your base but for the most part you can scan pretty much any vehicle you see out in the environment with your phone and it will instantly unlock it for you and then the next tip has to do with just your movement mechanics there's actually a power slide that you can do or as you're running you can just hit the B button and you will do a slide just like most shooters nowadays Apex Legends Call of Duty I mean, you name it, most games have a slide now. But this slide actually works with gravity. You can actually power slide down hills and get around the environment a lot faster and a lot safer. Instead of jumping and just walking your way down the hill, you can just slide and you won't take as much damage, if any at all. So if you just find yourself on top of a hill and you need to get to the bottom of the hill for whatever reason, you can, in fact, power slide down the hill and it will build up speed as you go. And then the final tip I have for you guys has to do with the type of ammo that you use for your weapons. Now all your weapons have different mod slots. You can have different attachments, different scopes, different types of bullet damage. For example, you can have poison damage for your bullets, explosive rounds, incinerary rounds. But from what I've discovered, there's armor piercing rounds and that basically just puts the game into easy mode. If you don't have armor piercing rounds, you can still kill people. For example, if some Someone's not wearing a helmet every single gun will one-shot headshot enemies so if they're just wearing a hat or if they don't have any headgear you can one-shot with any weapon but as you get into the more dangerous areas you're going to find higher level enemies there's mid-tier enemies that have helmets and then there's high tier enemies that have full-on body armor or juggernaut outfits and it does not matter if you have armor piercing rounds it will one-shot kill headshot every person in the game so they could be wearing just complete body armor they could be in a juggernaut outfit fit it doesn't matter how much body armor or how high of a level these enemies are it will one shot kill them if you have armor piercing rounds on so for my playthrough I put silencers on almost every weapon I have and then I also put on the armor piercing rounds Sometimes I like to mix it up and I like to use some like poison damage or incinerary rounds But if you just want to go in and have like a stealth mission and take out everyone as fast as possible I highly highly recommend the armor piercing rounds unless Ubisoft does something to nerf the armor piercing rounds I think it's 
probably one of the most overpowered things in the game. It will make any gun one shot kill any enemy and it's just really good. So trust me, you're going to want to put armor piercing rounds on all of your weapons. So that is going to do it for all my tips and tricks for you guys. If you guys enjoyed it, let me know down in the comment section down below. And if you guys really enjoy it, I can come up with a second tip and trick video. But yeah, trust me, a lot of these tips are going to make your life way easier when you play Far Cry 6. I wish I knew a lot of these things when I first started playing the game, so hopefully all these tips will help you guys out. But if you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated. If you guys would like to join my channel's Discord, the link will be down in the description down below. I also stream on Twitch at Swanee Plays Games Live. I play a lot of different games. I'm going to be playing a lot of the Battlefield beta and a lot of Battlefield going forward, so be sure to check me out on Twitch. And that is going to do it for me, everyone. And I will talk to you all in the next video.